everyone, we're Nick and Rachel. If you're new here and haven't been following our adventures up to now, then first of all, welcome. But secondly, you would typically find us vlogging our travels around the world. But today's video is going to be a little bit different. As we travel through various different countries, we've noticed that there are a number of things in each country that are a little bit different to what we are used to in the UK and Canada. The reason that we have this channel is to share our travel experiences in the hopes of inspiring others to travel more. With that, we want to share some tips and tricks that we've picked up in each of the countries that we've visited. So if that you want to go to the same places, you'll be armed with some helpful information that will make planning and navigating around a little bit easier for you. Today's video is going to be focusing on traveling in Panama. If you have been watching our videos, then you'll know that we only visited Panama City this time around. So therefore, if this seems like a shorter list than you would expect considering our other tips and tricks videos, then we do apologize, but we hope that you still find these useful. Before you fly to Panama, you're going to need to fill out a passenger form. And this is super simple. It can be done online before you go. And upon arrival, the QR code that you receive via email will be scanned post immigration. Once you come out of the airport, then the first thing that you're going to need to do is get into the city. For that, there are a number of different options, which are not immediately obvious as to how you go about them. In terms of public transport, you have two different possibilities. The first of those is to take a bus, which will take you pretty much directly from the airport into whichever part of the city that you go to. And if you are unsure as to which one is the right one, you can always consult Google Maps. The other option is to take a short bus, which will then get you onto the metro lines. And from there, you can take the metro to whichever desired station that you need to go to for your accommodation. Do bear in mind, though, that for each of these, you will need to get a Metro Transit card, which will be five US dollars per card. But thankfully, once you have that, then each fare, I believe, is under a dollar, even on the longer journeys. So you can definitely be rest assured with that. However, since we found all of that a little bit confusing, considering the fact that we were really quite tired when we got into Panama, the other option that we ended up taking was using a rideshare service. In terms of rideshare options, Uber is always available and as an added security measure, they will provide you with a pin that you need to provide the driver when you get into the vehicle. However, there is another option. It's called InDrive and it is often much cheaper, which is why I believe the locals prefer it, but we ended up using it and really enjoyed it. It works a little bit differently to Uber in that they don't give you a set price. They give you a suggested price and you put that out there and then drivers in the area can either accept that price or they can come back to you offering a different price, which might be a few dollars more than the price that you initially offered. And you can either accept or decline that. So it's a little bit of an online negotiation but it's really not that complicated. It's super simple. There's no talking involved. It's purely just receiving the numerical offer on the app itself. Once you've confirmed your ride, your driver will show up much like Uber does. You get in and they will take you to your destination where you will pay in cash. Keep in mind that on InDrive, any tolls are not included in the price, so they will be added afterwards. Another thing just to bear in mind when it does come to ride sharing is if you're trying to identify the car that you need to get into, then on either InDrive or Uber, then it will provide you with the make, model and registration of the car that is going to be picking you up. However, unlike in a number of other countries that we visited in Panama, you are only legally required to have your registration on the back of the vehicle. There is no need for a front registration. Just keep that in mind. If it looks like it's an unmarked vehicle, then just take a look at the back and make sure that there's a registration on it. If that matches what you have in whichever rideshare app you're using, then you know you're in the right one and you can enjoy your ride. Transit links to the Miraflores Visitor Center, which is where you would go to see the Panama Canal, are scarce. However, the city sightseeing tour bus does actually stop there. 
Therefore, the best way to get to and from there is a ride share. From where we were in Panama City, it cost about five US dollars each way. When you are planning your visit to the Panama Canal, then it is actually worth checking the official Panama Canal websites. And the reason for this is because they keep a log of when the ships are expected to go through the locks for the visitor center that day. Therefore, you can plan your visit around the 45 minute IMAX show, any shopping you want to do or any extra information you want to glean from the visitor center ahead of watching ships go through the famous locks. Do bear in mind though that these schedules are not consistent. They do change daily. So as a means of not getting caught out, then you definitely do need to consult the website every time you wish to visit. Casco Antigo, which is the old part of Panama City, is very walkable. So we highly encourage you to base yourself in that part of town or just on the outskirts because it will make visiting that historical area much easier and you'll be able to enjoy some of the most beautiful architecture in the city. Now onto some practicalities. The great news with Panama, much like its neighbor Costa Rica, is that water from the tap is potable in this city. Therefore, if you want to save yourself some money by not spending on bottles of water, then this is a great way to do that. However, as with pretty much most places in the world, if you're in a building that's maybe a little bit older and you're not 100% sure of the plumbing situation, then it is always worth just asking your accommodation to be 100% certain about it. Panama technically has its own currency, which is called the Balboa, but it retains parity with the US dollar. In fact, most of their coins actually look like US coins as well. However, they often just have a different figure on them. That all being said, the US dollar is the accepted currency in Panama. So it's best to just have US dollars on you at all times to keep things simple. In terms of when you make use of those dollars though, then there are several places where certain payment methods are preferred. So when it comes to the likes of supermarkets and major tourist attractions, then cards are definitely accepted. Though do bear in mind that mobile wallets such as Google Wallet or Apple Pay may not be as acceptable. For everything else though, including the likes of InDrive, then cash is king. So make sure that you always have some spare USD on you in paper form at all times. Groceries are really easy to find in Panama City. You can find them at mini markets, supermarkets, and there are also a ton of street vendors selling fruits and vegetables. We found that groceries in Panama City were so cheap compared to Canada and the UK. Most fruits and vegetables were well under a dollar per pound, but just in general, all groceries like bread, cookies, spreads, rice, pasta sauce, everything was so cheap. So if you're looking to travel on a budget and your accommodation has a kitchen, this will definitely be the way to go. That all said though, if you do want to go out for food, then there are equally cheap ways of doing that. In order to get the best prices, then you want to look for the more local places that advertise the likes of desayuno, which is breakfast, and hueso, which is lunch, comida del dia, menu del dia, and this will then provide the option to eat very, very well, have a massive plate of food and pay no more than about five US dollars per person, which as we all know now is phenomenally cheap. If you find yourself in any kind of restaurant and you'll be paying any more than that, then you are going to somewhere a little bit more upmarket than certainly we went to. Some of our local favorites for breakfast included Dress, which is kind of like a fried bread. It is absolutely delicious. Patacones, empanadas, tortillas, and carimaniolas. A typical comida del dia will include rice, beans, some kind of protein, and you can usually choose between beef, chicken, or fish. I'm sure they have vegetarian options as well. It includes salad as well as some plantain. They are always massive portions, absolutely delicious and so cheap. So these are really great ways of trying local traditional food and we highly recommend that you do. And that is our short but sweet 
list. We hope that each of these tips and tricks proves to be helpful to you for whenever you choose to make up your itinerary for coming through Panama. However, we do completely recognize that we don't know absolutely everything there is to know, and I'm sure there are things that we've missed. With that, if you have any further questions based on our travels, or you have any recommendations yourself, then feel free to add those in the comments below. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.